Goodness gracious, it is Thursday afternoon, which means it's time for another stream. How's everyone doing today? Welcome, welcome, welcome all. This is a very special stream. Last stream was special. We had our 1,000 subscribers special. It's right there in the name, right? Special. But I think this stream is just a slight bit more special, specialer, if you will, because today we have a guest. We have a guest on stream, and it's someone that a lot of you know. If you're a longtime uh, viewer, if you've been on the Discord, you know this guest. I am talking about none other than the inimitable, indomitable, indefatigable Lucy Dove. So Lucy, can you unmute yourself and, and say hello? Hello from the audio cocoon. Greetings. How is everyone? Greetings, Lucy. Lucy's on the stream. You see, this <laughs> you is like... You finally got me. You finally got me. This is like a punishment for you because you, you abandoned me to go on vacation. And then I was, you know, I was doing all the stream all alone. And now to make up for it, I'm forcing you to come on and, and go the extra mile and actually participate. I know. Oh, what did, why did I do that? Honestly, now I have to sit here and suffer. It's, it's a kind of, it's a kind of sadism on my part, but don't worry. We'll have fun as well because today is a new format that we're trying, which is called Conlang Clinic. So Conlang Clinic is an, it's like a venue for us to collaborate on Conlangs from people in the community. So Lucy has a Conlang. Uh, I don't know if anyone knows that, but Lucy has a Conlang and she's brought all the material to us today. And we're going to work on a, we're going to work on a bit of a project. Um, so before we do all the YouTube intro -y stuff, maybe Lucy, um, why don't you just give the, the people in the chat the special exclusive backstory of this conlang? Where does it come from? Why does it exist? Um, so this is my one and only conlang. Uh, will I make another one? Who knows? Let's see how this goes. Um, so you ran a test course for one of your uh, one of your classes. I was a guinea pig. And I decided to make a cat language because... I mean, I mean, it's cats, so, you know, cat language. Why not? Um, and I just had a lot of fun with uh, some of the random hissing noises uh, and sort of phlegmy noises, uh, the technical terms. Everyone, please forgive me. Um, I am a noob. Um, I've been I've been told I must. Um, uh, what was the word? Uh, the osmosis, I need to absorb all the information rather than actually be taught anything by Colin. Uh, so hello to Discord people. Um, thank you for all your help, uh, helping me understand what everyone's talking about. Um, I hope you enjoy the cat language. It's um, nice and weird. Uh, as you, I'm sure everyone that knows IPA can see, there's some strange noises in there, which is very exciting. Well, uh, they can't quite see yet, but uh, oh, oh, they, they will not? soon. Okay. No, no, no. I it's all, it's, we're going to do a reveal. Um, oh. Yeah, they're just looking at me sort of like nodding along, bouncing on the, on the, on the screen, you know. Oh, you, hmm, you, you are good at the bouncing. You're good at the bouncing. So, uh, great. <laughs> I don't know. I think maybe what we should do is, is bring everyone in on the secret and, and do the reveal of this language. Um, we'll, we'll say hi to YouTube first and then we'll get into it. All right, knuckles cracked, hydration insured. All right, we're gonna say hello to YouTube. And oh, Lucy, do you wanna say hello to YouTube too? Oh, sure, hi okay. YouTube. No, don't say it yet, because we haven't done it yet. Okay, <laughs> Okay. no, 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 okay. Well, no, you're gonna have fun editing this part, aren't you? Um, okay, YouTube, welcome back. We have a really, really special episode for you today. Today is the first ever Conlang Clinic where we work on a conlang from the community and have fun developing it together. Um, we have a special guest that many on the channel will know, Lucy Dove. Lucy, say hello to YouTube. Hi, YouTube. Hi, Discord people. Um, I'm, I finally bit the bullet and I am vocally on stream. 
Uh, yeah, so you will not get my camera on, but you'll get my voice. <laughs> voice is all we need. We're gonna, we're gonna, again, knuckles cracked. We're going in. So Lucy's brought us a language, a conling that she has worked on. What was it? Like a year and a half ago? It was a while ago, and neither of us have seen it for a while. So it should be interesting. I, I was, um, I was somewhat involved in the. Uh, creation of this in that I sort of goaded Lucy to do it and guided with some of the the initial steps but other than that my involvement was very very limited so let's zoom over to the side webcam and see what we have so Lucy has kindly provided us with all of the material um, accumulated for this language and in a spreadsheet form and so why don't we take a look and Lucy, what, what are your thoughts about this language? How do you feel about it? What's, you know, this is the Conline Clinic. So you come into the clinic, you know, the doctor says, well, you know, what ails you? Well, you know, what seems to be the matter? Well, um, so as everyone in the Discord knows, I am a Conlanging noob, um, which is fine. I, uh, I, I don't mind that. It's quite interesting. Um, However, I will need all of your guidance into how to improve my language. I think, well, the sounds were fun. I enjoyed the sounds. And we'll get to the grammar later, but I also very much enjoyed the grammar. Um, That's... Yeah, I, I'd, be, I'd be interested in seeing what everyone thinks of it, really. Uh, it was very silly. And I sort of, it sort of turned into a cat language because I enjoyed some of the sounds. And... Um, then it sort of, uh, well, we also made a um, half an alphabet, which we won't, we'll maybe show you a hint of later, but um, it, it was, I, I really enjoyed the world building aspect. Um, oh, look, Colin's cleaning up. Yep. I'm cleaning up while, while you're explaining <laughs> the backstory. I'm just going to make things a little. Make it pretty. Yep. A little more readable for this spreadsheet format. Okay. So what do we have here? We have a, a nice hefty constant inventory in front of us. Let's just focus on this region for now. And for those who are not familiar with um, the conventions here, we have the phonetic transcription on top. And then within these angle uh, brackets, we have a romanization because you have seen me struggle copying special characters over. It's not pretty. Um, so we have a nice romanization. What, um, what strikes me about this inventory when we first, um, when we first look at it is you have some really exciting things going on in the, um, in the, uh, say in the obstruent region. So I'm going to take this fricative column and I'm going to, this will probably screw up the rest of the spreadsheet in some way, but and let's actually take the Africans and put them up here too. So we can get all of our, oops, no, I did that wrong. Uh, no, I did it right. Good calling. So let's, uh, let's do our Excel magic or our Google Sheets magic, I guess, technically. Uh, I want to delete cells and shift up. There we go. Okay, so let's look at the um, let's look at the obstruent system, which is this part of the inventory right here. So the stops or plosives, the fricatives and the affricates. And one thing that occurs to me is to ask you, uh, what are your goals for this language? Are you looking for something that's naturalistic, that seems like it could be a language that you might find in, in the world spoken by human beings just like ourselves? Or uh, are you going for something with a di different kind of world building? You know, maybe a, a different, a different species, a different vocal anatomy. Um, what are you thinking? Well, so I don't think I want to go particularly naturalistic. That is the right terminology. Yes, yes. Um, I so when I realise it's kind of a cat language, I um, I imagined. Uh, some very intelligent uh, bipedal cat creatures. I guess alien. Uh, they would count as alien. So I think go nuts, go creative. 
I'm not looking to. Um, I, I am inspired by grammar of um, of certain languages, as you'll find out later. Um, but I, I just want to go. I wanted to go a bit nuts. I think was the idea, creative and nuts. Okay, so if you're not trying to hew closely to naturalism, then we can. I think it's worth commenting on some of the aspects of the phonology from the point of view of naturalism, but then we can just throw that out because that's not your goal. But I think in the interest of, um, of at least knowing when you're sort of, um, coloring outside the lines, uh, it's good to, to explore this. So one thing that is notable by its absence, and I think uh, that we've seen this, uh, pop up in the chat. Yeah. Galactic sand mentions, we don't have any, um, any coronal stops. So Denta alveolar, I think uh, this was originally given this slash because um, I don't think uh, I don't think either of us made up our minds about what they were supposed to be. Uh, dental being a sound made with the tongue against the the back of the teeth, like th, um, or uh, in some cases between the teeth. Um, but so dental could be something like th versus alveolar where the tongue is back against the, the ridge behind the teeth. You know, if you sort of have your tongue in your, your mouth and you go up against the teeth like this, and then you move back a bit, there's a bit like a, a sort of a, a ridge, and that's the alveolar ridge. So in, uh, say, the variety of English that I'm speaking now, uh, our stops are coronal stops, coronal meaning made with the uh, tip of the tongue, um, are alveolar. So they're up against the alveolar ridge. In other languages, such as Spanish, for example, uh, we have a uh, dental stop. So the, the, instead of ta, da. I don't know if that comes through on the audio, Lucy. Does that come through to you? Chat, does that come yes, through I to heard, you, that I, distinction? I heard the difference. I heard the difference. So we the don't... Pizza Ridge. The what? <laughs> Sorry, the Pizza Ridge. I was enjoying. Um, I've got chat up on the side. Uh, oh, nice. Hi, chat. Um, they're, they're very funny, as always. Hello. So, Continue, sorry. So what's notable about this is this is perhaps one of the most common um, most common sounds that you find. Something made with the tip of the tongue against that part of the mouth. Uh, whether it's against the teeth, whether it's against the alveolar ridge. It's very, very rare. I won't say it's never found, but it's extremely rare not to have something in this zone here. So that's something that pops out as being something worth noting from a naturalism point of view. Um, another thing that's interesting is we have some contrasts in the, so in, in the stops that we do have, we have some really interesting things going on. We have a four-way contrast in the bilabial stops and a four-way contrast in the velar stops. And the contrast in the, in the bilabial stops is sort of like a two by two axis. So you have, um, you have voiceless, uh, voiceless stops like ba and bia. These are these two, and then you have aspirated uh, equivalents pa and pia. Um, the other dimension is palatalization. So palatalization is this this little y sound that's that's creeping into the, that's creeping in after. Um, so the contrast here is voiceless versus aspirated. Now, this might be um, telling you the same thing you've heard already, but what's the difference between a voiceless stop and an aspirated stop? We have, when we say a stop, it's a stoppage of airflow. So can you hold the sound P without any other vowel on either side? You know, give it a try. I mean, barely. Right, you can't because there's no there's no air coming out. So no. you, you may be holding it, but no one can hear because there's no indication. Um, yeah. So when we have a vowel after it, that vowel is going to um, have some voicing associated with it, typically, or or a consonant, um, uh, like a voice consonant after it, like l. And the precise duration or the precise time when that voicing um, in your vocal folds, that vibration starts to happen is called the voice onset time. So how long from the um, the closure that makes the stop, pa, pa, or pa, at what point in that process does the, does the vibration begin? 
That's, this is called the voice onset time. And so the voice onset time of a voiceless stop is typically, um, it's typically just none. So you have the closure and then you have the voicing start as soon as the closure stops. Ba, ba, like that. With an aspirated stop, the voice onset time is positive. So you have the closure, ba, and then you open up your mouth to say ah, but you don't voice yet. So instead of saying ba, you say pa. So you have this, this H-E quality coming out. And this is called aspiration. So this may be, Lucy, old news to you, um, but this is, I think, for the purposes of conline clinic, I think it's worth delving a little bit deeper into some of the, the workings of this. Uh, no, I mean, I, I definitely always need a refresher because, again, I am a noob. Um, yes. <laughs> and so this, um, this distinction between an aspirated and a voiceless um, stop is what you see in a language like Mandarin. The contrast uh, between these these two members of the stop uh, family, and here they're romanized as P and B. So the aspirated one is a P, is written with a P, and the plain voiceless is written with a B. Although in IPA we write it with a P, so there's a bit of that going on there. Okay, so that's the situation in the uh, labial stops. Any questions, Lucy? Nope. Uh, I think we're good. Um, oh, hi, Queen. <laughs> welcome. Yep, uh, yes, welcome. Uh, this is my cat language. Everyone, I'm revealing it. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I, just, I understand. Uh, I get what you're putting down. You may be so. think, why is he going over this in such detail, right? That may be the question that comes to mind. Uh, well, I appreciate it. I feel like the other people in the chat probably know these things but that's fine so the reason that i'm bringing this up is when we go over to the velars we have a different situation so here we have you notice how this the, the sort of the core symbol here is the same p there is a p it's written with a p in all ca four cases here it's written with a k in two and a g in two so what's going on here it's a different contrast here we can talk about um about voicing uh continuing onto the or at least beginning onto the on the stop itself so while you're saying the stop the vocal folds are the vocal folds are vibrating so ga 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 aga there's no um there's no stoppage of that vibration throughout the process so here we have the voice onset time um resulting in a situation where the vibration happens more or less immediately after the closure and more uh, and in the velars we have a situation where the voicing is on the 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 consonant itself and so usually what you would find is if the language does one thing um in one like has one sort of contrast in one place of articulation most of the time it will maintain that same contrast across all places of articulation uh, so that's one thing that I would say that gives me some pause um, when it comes to the point of view of naturalism. Of course, again, given that that's not your primary aim, I think fair enough, but it's something I think is worth mentioning. Um, yeah, I just talked a lot. Lucy, thoughts, questions? Uh no, it's good. Um, I obviously I'm not going for a natural humanoid. Well, cat humanoid. I'm not going for human. Uh, we're using different vocal cords here. So yeah, I, I don't obviously I don't mind that it, it seems a little strange uh, and good with strange. Okay. All right. So those are th some things in the stop part of the chart. Um, we also have this interesting, um, this interesting palatalization contrast. So we have these little, this little superscript J showing up all over the place. Uh, we see it in the labial stops, in the velar stops. We see it in th uh, the fricatives as well, at least in the coronal part of the part of the chart. Um, we see it in the trills. 
So we have R and then the palatalized R. R. <laughs> Bit tough. Oh, it's so hard to pronounce. <laughs> we see it in so we see it in the approximants. We have W and R. Uh, and we see it in the lateral fricatives as well. So L and L. Um, there is an aspect to some of these uh, which makes them hard to pronounce. I think you can. So this is again a kind of a common feature of sound systems is that when they have a contrast, they tend to persist the contrast across um, basically everywhere that they can. It's not a 100% rule like most things, um, but it's common that if you are, are having this this really um, strong plain versus palatalized contrast in so many um, in so many um, pairs of sounds, then you would expect it sort of across the board, except when it doesn't really articulatorily make sense. That would be my expectation. Um, so the question is, we have um, we have it in the labials, but we don't have it in the dentals. So we just have na. Yes. Right. But asterisk, I think there's a way out of this problem. We could say maybe at an earlier stage of the language, we did have nya. But then this palatalized um, coronal turned into a true palatal nya, nya. And so that's why we have this gap here. Okay, I'm good with that. So that's that's an option if you're, if you're thinking about this um, in that way. So these are the things that pop out to me when I look at this inventory. The question for you though is, are you interested in, in tweaking the inventory? Is this something that you're happy with? Um, so I do remember um, when I was coming up with words uh, in the language, um, I think it was the guttural stop that I just didn't like the sound of very much with the other sounds. Mm. Um, I, got, I hope I got that right. Yeah. That the, so the, uh, yes. Okay, uh. good. <laughs> Please correct me if I say anything wrong. Um, it's very likely that that will happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it something, I think I used it in a few words, but I sort of didn't favor it. So that maybe that's something to think about. Okay, um, so we can, this can be something that might be on the chopping block. We'll, we'll look at it. Um, mm. I think it might be helpful to see some of these um how these sounds combine into to form words so that we can get the overall feel of the language. What think you, Lucy? Sorry? What, uh, shall we look at the, some of these sounds, how they combine to form words so that we can give, yes. um, you know, give ourselves a feel of the language? Yes, let's go for it. Okay, so then let's just take a look at the vowels quickly. I don't think there's a lot to say here. Um, so we have a, a five vowel system with contrastive length. Um, one thing that's kind of interesting is that the back vowels tend to be kind of lower than, they're lower than their corresponding front vowels. So we have something like e, e, a, o, u, um, which is, which is cool. We can consider, you know, for those out there in the audience wondering about cardinal vowels. You know, we could consider these phonologically as being u, but they just tend to realize themselves more lowered. And similarly, this could be considered phonologically o, but um, it it shows up as a as a more open o. Um, so that's I you know I don't th think there's anything too much to discuss about the vowels. Um, any thoughts about the vowels, Lucy? I think I was happy with them from memory. Made some kind of row, you know, catty noises. Uh, can the cat say meow? Can they? You guys can read IPA. <laughs> Mew. So start with this. Mew. Mew. Then ah. Meow. And then ooh. Ooh, meow. <laughs> So yeah, I think we can get there. It depends on what um, what your syllable structure is like. Mm. Maybe we should find where that is written in here. 
So we have, okay, I'm assuming the CVD is the syllable structure, um, but I think we have some issues, Lucy, here with, with documentation. I think we need, might need to spend some time, we might need to spend some time on the, uh, on the documentation, making it a little bit more, yeah, a little bit more user-friendly. Let's go over here into the, uh, the second tab. Let's see if we get any guidance in here. So we actually have some sentences and grammatical stuff sorted out. It doesn't look like we have much said about the um, about the syllable structure, other than this cryptic note CVD up here, <laughs> um, which sounds like something that I would have written. Um, maybe yes, it's, I think uh, it was. Yeah, but but its meaning is lost to time. If I were to try and reconstruct this, I would probably say, "Oops, I'll get this on screen for everyone." CVD is up here. Um, I would say that there is a, a syllable structure that has a mandatory onset, uh, a, a mandatory vowel, and then some kind of optional thing at the end um, that is not just any old consonant. Ah, maybe it, maybe it, it has to be a nasal. End. Yeah. Okay. It so, was. So it then was. It was similar to Japanese. All right. So then let's let's write it CVN. Um, okay. And. I don't remember if we made the onset constant mandatory. Probably not. Yeah. Um, let's let's just double check. See if there's anything that starts with a vowel in here at all. There isn't, but there are. Hmm. Yeah. It doesn't actually look like there are any vowel initial syllables. No. Uh, I don't think there is. Okay, so then let's make this mandatory. C. Okay, so this is our syllable structure. And let's put this somewhere where we'll find it in the future. <laughs> uh, okay, syllable structure down here. That's somewhat hideous. There we go. So CVN, N is any nasal. Great. Great. Um, we had a question about um, how the system was assembled from Quain. Did I transcribe it? Um, I believe going back, this is a while ago. Uh, so this was in the context of a, a little six week course uh, that I put on a conline course to introduce people to, uh, to the discipline, to the, to the way of life. Um, and I think as part of the, as part of one of the assignments at that time, um, we went through the, the IPA keyboard, um, or we went through one of those sort of IPA soundboards where you can click on the, the sounds and hear things. And then people chose the things that appealed to them. And then we tried to massage them into something that was workable as a, as an inventory. I think that was our, 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 uh, technique. Does that ring a bell, Lucy? Yes, I think that was what happened. Okay. It was good. It was really fun. Oh, thank you. Um, so let's take stock where we are. I've ranted about voice onset time and we've looked at the consonant and vowel inventories. We've looked at the syllable structure. And from what I'm understanding, the, um, the phonology is something that you're more or less happy with, with the slight exception maybe of that glottal stop. Yes, I think the only other thing was um, there's a ch sound. Mm. But I've also got the other one that I can't pronounce, the French one, I think. Have I? Yes? The, yeah, you have a, a, a ch and a r. Yeah, I'm very bad at pronouncing that one. Uh, so that's a question mark. But just because I can't pronounce it doesn't mean the cat people can't pronounce it. Mm. So, you know. Uh, I've got the, As long as I've got the proper on ch, then. Well, and the, uh, the Welshy one as well. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. I'll Shall see. we try an experiment, sure Lucy? Gonna... Should we try a, yeah, sure. a quick experiment? And then we'll we'll put in a whoop, I'll put in a segment break. That does, that was a bad thing. My well, it looks like I'm uh, I'm my mic. I have to hold for now. Uh, good time to uh, to put in a segment break in a minute. But let's take a uh, let's take an example of this this ch. So this is a uvular fricative, a voiceless uvular fricative, ch. And the one you're having trouble with is a voiced uvular fricative, r. So, no. Now that went know. almost into a trill. At least if the audio, um, if the audio came through correctly. Take the distinction between s and z. 
you know, try and figure out what is going on in your body when you make that distinction. So we can can we get a s Lucy? So now <laughs> it might help to put your your uh, your hand on the front of your throat. Do you feel it? Okay. Yes, I do. Do you feel the vibration there? I do. So that's what you're trying to add to to give. Did it work? No. So this this uh your channel is now just teaching me to pronounce things that's what this channel is now this is the clinic <laughs> uh okay I'll, I'm, I'm gonna put a stop there because i'm not sure <laughs> my throat was that but uh i'll, I'll try off stream <laughs> okay okay fair enough well let's put in a break for youtube and let me reattach my mic to the the, the mount um thanks youtube for joining us uh we are going to be forging ahead and solving conlang problems. So when the conlang clinic returns, we will see you there. Until next time. Say say bye for now, Lucy. Bye for now. Okay, great. I have to fix this. Uh Lucy, entertain entertain the people. <laughs> Hi people. How's it going? Is everyone well? Can everyone hear me? Oh good. Okay. I'm not even really sure how this works. Let's put me off screen. Um, What's happened to your mic? Well, it's just come. It's just come undone. I don't know. I oh, I, I, I did something. Um, I can't. Oh, I can't oh. find a way to put myself off screen without the music coming up, though. Oh, I see. Yeah, the music will come up. Um. Well, if you want to scat over the music, Lucy, that's possible. <laughs> how do cats scat that's the question who else scats but cool cats that's true no you're right i did see aristocats so obviously okay uh, uh, this is going to be well, embarrassing so i'm just going to put the the thing on and everyone enjoy enjoy the nice music i'll be back in in a minute or two bye right that's what i'm talking about the mic is back okay lucy did you hear that scat i did it was very uh cat language appropriate it was terrible um, don't encourage yes. this kind of thing <laughs> uh, all right the mic is back oh back. scat man more like cat man very good okay you're gonna have very to good. you're gonna have to use that little segment lucy you use it for something Oh, it will be in an intro, don't you worry. Don't you worry. All right. Okay, so uh, lesson for me, don't mess around with anything in this this realm here. Just don't touch it, especially not during stream. Um, unless I want to do a, a mic drop. Okay. All right, so shall we, shall we go back? Shall we welcome YouTube back into our, our web of... Uh, madness cats. cats web of cats oh <laughs> picture that like a web of cats i i literally do yeah i fully how big is this imagined. spider no okay, okay. we'll just we'll, we'll, we'll get back into youtube it's gonna be fine lucy brings out the yeah. goofier side of me so you know i Cancel apologize the stream. end it end it now Cut. Uh, <laughs> all right okay so youtube Welcome back. We are going right into the conline clinic. We got Lucy Dove here. We're working on this cat language. Say hello, Lucy. 
Greetings, everyone. Greetings and salutations. No. Uh, we need to, well, well, I guess we'll find out now, but um, we need to see what my greeting was because I don't remember it. All right. <laughs> well, hey, that's a good place to start. We were going to, we were wanting to hear what this language actually sounds like. So let's go back over to the side webcam and do, 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 do. where on earth is this thing? Very good question. All right. So I think, ah, yes, here we go. I see an interjection. Yanni. So things need to be, things need to be word wrapped, I think, for us to see this, but not like that. Oh dear. Fix it. Fix it. Fix it. Okay. I'm sorry. What did I do? <laughs> I'm trying to delete it. Uh, there we go. That's a bit better. Good. So we have a word. So now, Lucy, do you remember your romanization system? Just about. Uh, it was Hiani. Hiani. I think I just about got that. I think you got it great. Oh, thank you. Um, and how? Uh, oh God, that's gonna be interesting. It was Kunhiani. Kunhiani. There's almost there seems to be a bit of a, a pitch accent to this. I think it. Just... Am I imagining? Yeah, was this before you told me about the existence of pitch accents? It, it may, could be. Yeah, it may have been um it may have been around that time. So we have this this romanization where we have LH which is corresponding to the lateral fricative and LHY to the uh palatalized lateral fricative. Now, whether this gets realized as a true palatalized consonant or a consonant plus a yod cluster that might that might vary depending on exactly what we're talking about. Like, I think it's quite hard to um, do a truly palatalized labial because palatalization is moving the the sort of mid part of the tongue up to the, the palate, right? So t versus t. You hear that distinction? Yes. Can we get a t versus t from you, Lucy? T, t. All right. But when you have a... a uh, labial the tongue is not involved at all or bilabial at least pa so how do you labialize how do you uh palatalize that you put the tongue up to the the top of the uh the roof of the mouth pia pia but it's very easy for those two gestures to become out of sync because they're not using the same you know organ they're not using the same articulator um active articulator so we have the tongue versus the uh, sorry, the tongue versus the lips. So those two gestures can go out, of, get out of sync, and we can get um, what is underlyingly a uh, palatalized labial turned into a, a palatal, uh, a labial plus palatal cluster, more or less. Yep, you know the terminology. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so <laughs> essentially, what what I'm saying is, you know, if anyone hears these um, gestures come apart. That's why. So if we have, let's find a, a word. So, myonya, uh, myonya. Am I getting that right, Lucy? Yeah, I think so. So, is it really mya, mya, or is it mya? You know, maybe it's not a big deal. <laughs> There's a slight I, uh, chance. I'm, I'm not sure. I think that's open to interpretation. Okay, so you've I started to say, hear. Yes, um, I will say everyone in the chat uh, has found me. I'm looked. Yes, I uh, do learn. Well, a lot of them know from Discord. I do poorly know Japanese badly. Um, so it is very heavily Japanese influence, and um, they are not fools. They found it out immediately. They're not fools, and they're not fooled, Lucy. No, they're not. You can't sneak anything by them. <laughs> what a shock, that shit. <laughs> okay, so now we've heard a few of the, the words in this language. We've, we've started to understand what's going on here. Um, I saw in the chat that someone noticed. Who was it? Who was it who noticed? I got to scroll up a bit. Someone noticed this affix that looks like nya. What's going on there, Lucy? Well, nya is the cat noise in Japanese. 
Uh, so I chucked it on all the verbs because I would like lots of nya. Okay, so whenever we have a verb, we have a nya. Is that what yes. you're saying? That is indeed. But the is case. it always the case that you have a nya? Let's look at some sentences. I think we have some sentences down here. So the final assignment for this course was to translate a little fable. You know me and my fables. I'm always using fables um, for conling exercises. And this uh, is the fable of the sheep and the horses, um, also known as Schleicher's fable, which is used uh, in reconstructions of Proto-Indo-European. But it's a nice short fable. Doesn't really have much of a point. Um, just about a, a rather sassy... Uh, rather sassy horse actually maybe maybe we should uh maybe we should translate it we should tell people so here's the <laughs> here yeah this is great um if i can find i can see other examples yeah yeah things are a bit out of out of sync but here's the gist of it um once upon a time a sheep that had no wool saw horses one horse pulled a heavy wagon one horse carried a big load one horse carried a person. The sheep said to the horses, I grieve when I see a person who drives horses. The horses said, when we see this, we grieve. A person using the wool of the sheep makes a warm garment. Then the sheep has no wool. <laughs> when the sheep heard this, it fled into the plain. So, gotcha. Sad. <laughs> Okay, so, but let's take a, uh, a look at this because we have this nya affix on the verb, but it's not just any verb. It is the present tense marker on the verb. So, Lucy, would you like to uh, translate this short sentence here, meaning then the sheep has no wool? Uh, as in, would you like me to read in my phone line? Yes, please. Oh dear, that's uh, let's see how. Zuan bia khin, was it the kh? Khin? Khin. Yeah. Uh, nyami sonya. <laughs> Very nice. So we have this nya present tense marker. And so then you see in this next sentence, if Lucy, you would be so kind. Han bia shopuze. <laughs> the only thing I would change is this is san. Yeah, that that was uh that was one of the things that was very difficult to say, I have to say. Having these final palatals. Yeah, san. but uh, perhaps if you have a cat uh voice box, it doesn't it's not an issue. No, so. it's not no, it's not. I mean, mm. you find final palatals in in natural in human languages as well. Um, sure, but not. I don't think any that I. Perhaps not that you've decent yeah. at speaking. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so. So some other things about this that just um, jump out. This is this does seem to be quite influenced by, say, Japanese grammar, um, yeah. in the sense that we have this S O V word order. Um, so. This, sheep here time at the time the sheep heard this um plain in relative um fled so this is something like um what's going on with this relative marker lucy do you what's what is this relative marker I to remember um i'm, I'm assuming it's sure. relative uh, I, I i guess so. this pool <laughs> Yes. Um, so if I remember correctly, I pretty much put everything on verbs, uh, mm. either um, suffixes or prefixes. Um, so who you're talking to, there were no sort of like Japanese has particles, but this was, I just chucked it on the verb as well. Mm. Right. That's what we're seeing here. So this is kind of like a or, non... Or was it the noun? Um, uh I'm just looking at this one here. When the sheep heard this. So 
this is like um to rephrase it literally into english it would be something like um Uh, the time which this mm, no how do we how, how do what do we make of this this the sheep the sheep yeah um the sheep's hearing time i'm i'm having trouble with this one I think we did document some of the yeah. Let's let's take a look and see there, if we so... can. Because I think we might have some some things to work on there. Because that doesn't seem to that doesn't seem to be processable by me at least. <laughs> okay. So we have yeah free word order. Ah, free word order. Okay, so that, that's why we have we have uh, this coming up to the start. That's um, what we did right. Okay. We also have tense markers, negation. Oh, because this is really interesting. So I think, you know, blah, okay, stop gesticulating. I think what the issue here, <laughs> that's a clip for the, uh, for the reel. Um, oh, yeah, got you, got you in one. I think what we have, the problem here is that we have sort of rotten documentation. I don't mean that the documentation is bad, but it's sort of become unmoored from the text and the language and everything's kind of we don't know in what state anything is so i think what we need to do is sit down and document some of these sentences and what's going on with each so yeah. let's you know i know i know this is like eating your vegetables but it has to be done <laughs> so let's um i'm just gonna turn off this extra light because it is annoying me um hopefully i'm not bathed in too much shadow on this side um uh, but no, you look fine well, thank I'm you. Keeping an eye. Um, so let's. Why don't I do this? Let's open up another. Um, another what's it called? Another window of this, so we can sort of have a. We can have two, two views on the spreadsheet. And let's make up a new sheet that's like. We'll call this grammar. And then let's just document things here. So we'll steal things from this sheet that we see. We'll be like linguists. We'll start treating this as a documentation project. So let's use our, our text as the, the gospel. Sound good? Yep, sounds good. Okay. And uh, people in the, people uh, don't think the documentation looks very good in the chat. Apologies. <laughs> My first con lang. I don't think it gets better after your first con lang, to be honest. Oh, does it? You've not? seen well. You've all seen my documentation for um, the various languages that we do on stream. It's it's a it's a work in progress. Always, you know. Well, there's color coding. Exactly. Okay. So color know. coding, and I have to thank Sutton for that. That's that was a ingenious. Oh, Sutton's rainbow! It was so nice. Okay, so what do we have here? Let's take the first sentence. This is our example sentence one. A sheep that had no wool saw horses. So morpheme by morpheme, chin, no, nyami, wool, sopu, have, and then this, this suffix that we're glossing, rel. Uh, Lucy, do you hear that uh, that odd sound? Odd sound? Yeah, there's no, a sort of a okay. hissing sound. Oh, it's gone now. Great. Um, okay. <laughs> super. So, tsopu, uh, have rel. So, the question is, what is this rel? And it seems to be something like, like the English witch. Uh, so, it's a relative marker. Um, but you could think of it that way. So, hinyami tsopu bya would be something like a sheep that had or which had no wool a no wool having sheep you could also sort of you could also force yes. it yes <laughs> okay so 
Um, so let's write down some documentation. So verbs um, take an ending pool uh, to form uh, relative clauses. That's a fact that we know. And how do we know it? Because of this. So let's let's give this sentence one. Is that okay? I guess that's just not gonna. <laughs> Whatever. Um, so then we can cite it here. Sentence one. Just a quick question, though, phonologically. Um, PPU. This this double P here. This is a geminate. I don't think this language would allow geminates other than nasals because we aren't allowing anything in the at the end of the syllable in the coda. Um, you know, but a P would wouldn't fit that. You know what I mean? So let's yeah. let's look at this sopu, the syllable structure of this. So s is a consonant, o is a vowel. P is a consonant, p is a uh, p is another consonant, q is a vowel. So these this is our our structure, our syllable structure yeah. for this um, for this word. Don't be fooled by ts being written with two separate letters. It's one it's one sound. It's an affricate. Generally, when you have you know, when you have a, a V and you have a C on the left, it's clear that the C goes with the V. The concept goes with the vowel. Um, the question is, what happens when you have them in between? And generally, the principle that um, we invoke in these contexts is the onset maximization principle. So the onset is the left side of the syllable, the constants on the left side, the coda is the con are the constants on the right side. Um, now, generally, you want to fill up the onset with as much as it can take, but we know that this language only tolerates, where is it? CVN syllables, according to the rule. So only one, only one constant can come before the vowel. So we would have to put it here, the boundary, and we get our eternal link that we always love. Okay. Again, you click remove link and nothing happens. It's just useless. Um, okay. So, then we're left with the CVC, where we have the syllable boundary here. So, pool. But this P is not allowed in the coda because we've said that the coda has to be an N. So, so I, think I think there's something going on there. Well, so a couple of the people in the chat mentioned something that I think we discussed a year and a half ago, um, which was after the N, the nasal, um, it is not double P, and after a vowel, it is double P. So, so it kind of inspired by, I think it was inspired by Japanese again, um, with the small tsu. Do you know, do you know what I'm referring to? So this is um, a segment that surfaces as gemination of the following segment when there's like a, a stop after it. Is that what is going on there? Yeah, uh, quite, yeah, small to, as Queen just said. Okay, yeah, so it's what's typically written in um, Japanese phonology is a Q, um, a, a capital Q. Okay, so then maybe you could also have this capital Q here, and then we're good. Okay, So. great. The question, you know, it can't really be wrong, right? Because you're making it up. But at least what we <laughs> want is the documentation to match the the phenomenon. Yeah. Okay, cool. That would be preferable. That would be preferable. So then Q is this, um, we can say it geminates following stop. I don't know if we want it to geminate anything else, but... For now, we can say this. Perfect. Okay. So then let's move on. Back to sheet two. Um, one horse pulled a heavy wagon. So it looks like 
we'll just call this two. It looks like what's going on here is that the relative marker is getting put onto heavy, Hian, as well. Yeah. Now this is a, a difference from English because English would consider have and heavy to be different types of words. Uh, we have verbs like have and adjectives like heavy, but it seems like what's going on in this in, in this language, by the way, Lucy, what's the name of this language? Oh, it's written somewhere. It was hard to pronounce. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Can where we find is it? it? Where did we name it? Uh, is it this Bimunya? Bimunya. Yeah, that's the one. Bimunya. There it is. Okay. Um, that looks like a verb form, incidentally. I went to the Nya. It was vital. All right. Um, so it looks like we could say adjectival concepts. You know, this isn't a very rigorous way of talking, but whatever, are expressed um, by stative verbs. And so what happens is that um, we can use this relative marker on this stative verb, hian, to do the same thing that an English attributive adjective does. So a heavy wagon. What is a heavy wagon? A wagon which is heavy, right? Or more like the way that this language would conceive of it, bimunya, a wagon which heavies. <laughs> I like that. So that's what's going on here, hianpu. Uh, so essentially we have the we have the thing that we express in English with attributive adjectives. Attributive adjectives are like a ah, heavy wagon, as opposed to predicative adjectives. Uh, the wagon is heavy. Um, the things that are expressed with, with uh, attributive adjectives in English and with relative clauses in English are treated the same in Bimunya. So that's kind of cool. A heavy ing, I think. Yeah. Who who wrote that yet? Yeah. Th Thomas Wood. A heavy ing wagon. You could also consider this rel marker to be like ing in English. Mm. Um, but it doesn't just attach to one word, it can attach to whole phrases. So hinyamitsopu. A noble having sheep. <laughs> okay, cool. What else is going on here? Well we have um we, we seem to have, uh, there's that, that hiss again. I wonder what's going on there. It could be me. It's probably me. Remember, uh, I'm in the cocoon. I'm yeah, in the audio so cocoon. we've got cocoon issues going on here. We've got, I don't know if there's like a, is there a caterpillar becoming a, a beautiful butterfly in there as well? Possibly. Uh, I will keep more still. <laughs> How is this? Oh, it's delightful. Okay. Oh, good. Oh, good. So we have some tense marking as well. So verbs take tense marking. Uh, the past tense is expressed with nyo. Mm -hmm. And we know this from one and two. Uh, so we have mako nyo and hyatsu nyo. We also have shippu nyo. So sorry, shippu nyo. Um, delightful. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, we have basically SOV order. So sheep, horse, saw. Um, one horse, heavy wagon pulled. So also two, basically every sentence will show this. So we don't have to, <laughs> we don't have to cite too many. Um, well, I think we, I think, uh, as was mentioned in segment one, I think it's a more of a free word order. Am I? Yeah. So we have this this claim that the language has free word order, but usually word order is never truly free. Mm. So there are languages with more flexible word order and less flexible word order that we casually sort of refer to as free word order, but 
but usually there are some some generalizations that can be made. So we'll see what kind of generalizations we can make. Um, what else can we learn? Um, oh, so we have numerals. One horse, pion, pion renyang. Is that right? I think so. You're better at that sound than I am, the uh, the R sound. R, that one? Yeah, you're good at that. See, I cannot, <laughs> but for the life of me, I can't do the uvula trill. So we all have right. our <laughs> our challenges in life, don't we? Um, okay, so then numeral plus noun order. So what? this is what, sentence three? Yep. Oh, while we're on the topic of, of sentence two, we have this word gia. Gia. You put, put the stop. Yeah, the glottal stop. So, how do you like it there? Um, would you like to pronounce my sentence? <laughs> uh, okay. Pion renyang hyanpu hyan hyanpu gia hyatsu hyatsu nyo. Sorry. <laughs> What have I done? Um, I don't, I don't dislike it, but I almost feel like it's not, maybe not necessary. Gear is fine. So How, what's it, the difference between with and without? How would you? Gia versus gia. Okay. So if this is true, then we introduce the fact that you don't necessarily have to have a consonant in the start of a syllable, uh, in the onset. Ah, uh, that's why we did it. That's why the stops there. Yeah, uh, I think so. so. It follows the other rule. Yeah, okay. I'm happy with it then. It's fine. Okay, so we can keep it, keep it as it is. Yeah. You know, we're gonna go all this trouble and just like, no, it's it's perfect as it is, um, and that's a good outcome. So, uh, Sachin is asking a question uh, oh. that you will need to help me answer. <laughs> Um, okay, um, say, <laughs> just keep speaking and, and Sutton can answer the question, um, Oh, d and me personally is how I speak? Yes. My, my accent. Oh God, I'm water. What does that mean? Oh, it's a sort of a, a wet substance that we, we often use to drink. Uh, is water wet though? That's the question. Let's, I let's find out. That. That's horrible. No. <laughs> Please continue. Okay. We have the real the real life accent swap channel going on here. Oh yeah, that's that's one of my favorite Discord channels. Apart from the Color Me Arts channel, which very much enjoying. That. Shout out to the Discord for everyone that's watching this uh, in the future on YouTube. And if you're not uh, if you're not aware, check the description. You'll find a a, a kooky bunch of, of individuals who are all absolutely delightful and ingenious. Um, and then you'll also find me there. Yeah. <laughs> right. oh, I'm I'm just there posting pictures of food. Um, and that's about it. That's about all I do there. Okay. So it's fine. Oh my goodness. Food sounds good. Okay. So focus. One thing that came up in the, in the chat, Sutton and Galactic Sand have pointed out, if, if there's going to be um, free word order, we may run into issues with dealing with how um, uh, how grammatical functions are marked because we do not currently have any case marking. Lucy, how are you on, on the concept of case marking? You will have to refamiliarize uh, me, <laughs> please. Okay, Thank so you. case marking is a strategy that languages can use in order to mark grammatical function. So let's back up and ask what is grammatical function? Um, when you have a sentence like, uh, let's see, I'll try and use an example that I don't always use. Um, well, we we're talking about cats here, right? So the cat chased the dog, sort of a role reversal situation. Um, but if, it, if, if we're in a, a place where the cats have language, I think they're probably chasing the dogs mm -hmm. rather than the other way around. So the cat chased the dog. There are two participants in this event of chasing. There's the chaser and there's the chasey. And 
one, we have to figure out a way to keep the two things straight. Who is the chaser and who is the chasey? And the way that we do this in English is typically by means of word order. So before the verb goes the chaser. Before, after the verb goes the chasey. Yes. Since we do not mess around with word order too much in English, this by and large works out. Um, there's another strategy. We don't use order. We actually explicitly mark the nouns themselves uh, for what their role is in the sentence. Uh, and we actually do this, as Ship Combo points out, in English with pronouns. So if I say, um, he admires her. What is the, who is the admirer? He. Who is the admiree? Her. If I mess those around and say him admires she, well, because English doesn't have free word order, that sounds really weird, right? Can I, can I, can I get an amen that that sounds weird? It does indeed sound weird. Okay. Him <laughs> admires she. Um, if we flip then the word order around to a, something that sounds nice, we get she admires him. And now the person who admires us has changed. Um, the point is, it's not just word order that is cor is controlling who would, who's interpreted as the admirer, who's interpreted as the admiree. It is uh, also the form of the pronoun itself. So if we change he to him, suddenly we can't understand the sentence anymore. Him admires her. I mean, I guess you could probably figure it out, but that's not really what... You would it's call. awkward, yeah. There's, yeah. yeah th there's a star in front of that one in the uh, <laughs> in the parlance of our times. Um, okay, so that change in the form of the noun is called case. Gotcha. So in right. Japanese, as as Sutton points out, there are uh, there are case marking um, particles, um, no ni o e, um, others because I don't know Japanese. I'm not going to. Uh, opine too much about uh, those specifics, but um, you know, if you've learned uh, German, uh, Latin, ancient Greek, Sanskrit, you know, uh, the yeah, farther Latin does this a lot, doesn't it? It Latin, does, so... yes, yeah. And so, the, the strategy Latin uses to express case is by changing the ending of the noun. Uh, Japanese, on the other hand, has a postposition, uh, a, a little particle that comes after the uh, yeah. or a uh, yeah, it's, it's a clitic, I guess you would say. Um, yeah, so we were talking about case. So when you have a free word order, you need to rely on something other than word order to tell you what what is playing what role in the sentence. That's the gist of that whole long explanation. Yeah. Um, and there are more, you know, things to talk about, blah, 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 the complications, but that's the gist. So if we have free word order, let's take a, an example. Um, one horse carried a person. Pyon renyan yo u shippun yo. Right? Yes. What happens? So I'm regretting this word wrap decision, I have to say. Oh dear. I'm really regretting it. Nope, don't merge. Colin struggles with spreadsheets, episode 561. <laughs> okay, so this means one horse carried a person. Now, if we have the ability to mess around with the word order, what if we had yo u pyon renyan shippun yo? What would that mean? I guess. I guess it's the other way around. Uh, a person carried one horse. Or maybe one... Person. A horse carried one... Oh, sorry. Yeah, a person carried one horse, right? Mm. That's what you said, right? That is what I said. Excellent. So in this case, then, we don't have free word order because changing the word order changes the interpretation of the facts of the sentence. Well, I do think maybe when I filled this out, I did it wrong or something because I remember wanting to sort of indicate who did what without me with it and being able to put it in any order. I remember that being something 
that I was interested in doing. I'm a Japanese, but not exactly particles, I think. Um, it's in we, here somewhere. Why don't we use something <laughs> something else to um, a different strategy? Why don't we do something like this? If you are out of the normal order, then you have to mark it in some way. That sounds like something you said last time. Well, I don't remember what I did, you know, a month and it, a half it, ago, much less a year and a half ago. So. Oh, well, no, I don't remember what I did yesterday, to be fair. So. Who are you again? I don't know. Who, what's What channel is this? Do, do I edit for you? I don't, I Could, don't know. Having the foggiest. No, I don't know what's going on here. So maybe what we do is we have a little a little way of marking that something has moved and mm. what in particular that thing should be interpreted as. Well, if you look at uh underneath sentence five, mm -hmm. I remember there was a this be something uh by the verb at the end. Mm -hmm. be Pianya. That that was something to do with this, I think. This seems to be um, one st. What does one st mean? First, I think probably first person. So this means yeah. that the subject is first person. So this will help us in the case where I or we are the subject, but um, but it won't help us in this case because both of these are third person. Gotcha. Um, everyone in the chat, yes, please be kind. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks, Queen. <laughs> Got my back. <laughs> okay. So, yes, uh, you know, being nice is always the rule. Um, <laughs> why don't we experiment? Okay. What, what if, um, what if we do, I see some stuff coming in from, from the chat about animacy. So there's an idea that prototypically subjects are more animate than objects. Oh. Um, so we have here, we have one horse is the subject, a person is the object, right? Yeah. Like that. Prototypically, subjects are more animate than objects. Why might that be? Well, when we think about... Because... Oh, nope, sorry. I was going to oh, go. No. I was going to go. It was a rhetorical question. I was going to go all professor, but you go. <laughs> Oh, no, I mean, I shouldn't speak instead of the professor. I... <laughs> professor Colin. Um, I'll give it a go, I guess, because usually when thing inanimate objects don't really do things, they have things done to them. Right. Right? That's exactly it. So okay. the things that, that, uh, that, um, so subject is associated with uh, volition and the ability to 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 bring action into the world so to speak that's a sort of a a more po poetic perhaps than it should be a uh, way of saying self, it. self actualization it's self actualization <laughs> is what it is so um so typically you expect um higher animacy things to be to be subjects and sure. you know then you look at what makes something higher animacy and there's a whole some, there's a thing called the animacy hierarchy that um, assigns different sorts of things based on how animate they're considered by the grammar. Um, so then you can play with that from a conlang perspective to say what is, where are you going to make the distinctions in the animacy hierarchy? So I, in this case, we have a horse and a person. My baseline instinct would be that a person would be considered more animate than a horse. And so um, then what you could do yeah, is... Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, so well, remember... This is a person, right? But mm -hmm. the people that speak these language are cats. Think about it. So what what's the cat horse relationship like? Well, I mean, I, I wonder how they feel about people. And by person, do they just mean uh, a creature of higher intelligence? Do they mean... so? It, by person, they could mean cat people and not human. I don't know. These are questions. <laughs> so, cat over people. So then the question is, uh, what's person? Ryo -u. Ryo -u. Ryo what is what does that actually mean? Does that mean a cat person? Does that mean any humanoid? Does that? I, I feel like cat person. I feel like. Okay, should, so yeah. a, a, a let's, keep, let's keep it simple. 
Yo U is a cat person. Although I should have probably made it sound more cat like if I was going for actual cat person, but I can change that later. <laughs> Great. And this isn't a person who likes cats, right? Uh, as in me or. <laughs> Oh, this person it's a person who is a cat. <laughs> person who, oh, right, yes, a cat. Yeah, okay. It's a person who is a cat. But I think I would probably change the word if I was going to do that. But for, for this case, it's Okay, just so, it. well, maybe, well, that's that's an option. But let's just forge ahead with this for now. Yeah, sure. Um, so what you could do to preserve the ability to have the um, the free word order is you could you could mark when the uh, typical expectation is being um, subverted, let's say. Oh. Right. So if you have this sentence, pion renyan yo ushipunyo, and you have free word order, the default expectation would be that a person is carrying a horse. Yes. So. If you want this to mean horses carrying a person, then you could put something, say, here to say, by the way, interpret the lower animacy thing as the subject. And I think that's what the B is about, if I remember. Yes? Uh, mm -hmm. Well, it's marked in the what grammar as, as first person. I see. What does that mean? <laughs> first person is, um, so the, the, the persons are first uh, including the speaker, so it's a it's a way of referring to a group that includes the speaker. So I is a group that includes the speaker and no one else. We is okay. a group that includes the speaker and some other some other people. Sure. Um, so that's the first person. You includes the addressee, and you know it's a group that includes the addressee. Third person is a group that includes neither the speaker nor the addressee. That's ah uh, this. This is that similar. They have that in Japanese with the kureru, ageru, morau. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. I will you. totally have to take your word for that because I do not know Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the chat can critique me. Um, Satan's saying inverse marker. I'm like trying to avoid and uh, putting in too many ter too much terminology in one in one episode. But yeah, we'll get there soon. Um, he seems excited. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so so I think B is a first person. That's my understanding here. You see, B makkopu, um, we see relative, B zupyanya, we grieve, first person, grieve, present. So I think that's what is going on with B. Mm. Um, so why don't we put in a break here because I think... Um, YouTube could use a break, uh, and then we'll we'll come back for the thrilling conclusion of our um, of our of our clinic. So YouTube, thank you again for joining us. We have been joined by Lucy Dove. Lucy, say goodbye to YouTube. Bye YouTube. Bye YouTube. See you next time. Until then, I'm not going to mess with this because it'll fall off again. But big <laughs> thumbs up YouTube. Okay. Uh, okay. Hydrate stretch time. Yes, I have in my cocoon, I have tea. It's a, yeah, tea, tea cocoon. <sighs> How's everyone doing today? It's a nice, uh, nice Thursday. We're doing the Conlang Clinic. We got Lucy on the stream. This is amazing. And technically, it's working, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, how am I doing, guys? Am I um, am I embarrassing? Am I <laughs> am I, am I making any sense? Oh, and I made the tea outside and brought it into the cocoon. I haven't decked out my cocoon with a kettle, uh, sadly, but perhaps next time. It's very warm in this cocoon. <laughs> Thank uh, you, Elijah. Excellent. Well, no, you're you. Queen, what does that mean? 
Well, I just want to say thank you to Lucy for not only going out and procuring a microphone for this event, but also for enduring the heat inside a comforter cocoon uh, throughout. It's much, much appreciated. That's okay. <laughs> Uh, oh, okay. Ship. I'm glad. I'm glad that's um, of use. Hopefully, hopefully, I'll remember the things that Quinlan is teaching me this time. <laughs> um, I think. Yeah, I think that the. I love this dynamic. I love the fact that um, that I actually have a person to stop me when I'm just going off and saying things that need explaining. Uh, I appreciate that a lot. Uh, and also someone to tell you that people are saying things in chat <laughs> yeah that's nice because sometimes because you see you know i don't know you don't have my view of this thing but i have chat over here on this monitor and then i have everything else on this monitor and then the camera in the middle so i don't know I, it's too much multitasking no that's yeah true. my brain um, seriously my brain is a single tasker it really is maybe two maybe two well what's good for me is that you can't ignore me. Normally, if I tell you things in chat, I don't get an answer at all. That's true. So um, this is quite pleasant, I have to say. I can interrupt you whenever I like. It's very good. <laughs> so I think what we'll do next is add this inverse marker to, um, or at least contemplate adding it. See, you know, Lucy, obviously you're the final, you have the final say on all of this, but I think it's a way for us to have free word order and avoid case marking. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I do remember, I mean, I like it still, uh, which is a good sign, but um, the free word order appealed. Uh, I think you can uh, just get more expressive, a bit more expressive with the language. Like, uh, I think it makes for some interesting emphasis, sort of creative emphasis when it, the word order is more free. Um, well, you definitely can have a, you know, word order is one tool to express a variety of things and mm -hmm. having a free word order allows you to express certain, uh, certain non, um, I don't know, what, what what's the best way to, you get to manage things like focus um, and topic uh, using, using word order. Um, sort of information so information structure stuff um yeah yeah i enjoy that about i enjoyed that about japanese um yeah Logan's. i did a long time ago <laughs> enjoyed that about latin i don't remember any don't test me canis est in horto that's all i got <laughs> very good thank yeah. you yeah logan as logan points out uh in the chat um that word order is never truly free and i think this is something that mm -hmm. I teased in the first half a bit, but I didn't really say much about. Uh, but it's just a term. The term free word order, word order is something that has stuck around. It's never truly free. There are degrees of flexibility and, and things that can be um, can be expressed using this this flexibility. But um, it's not as if anything can go anywhere. Anyway, shall we go back in? Shall we say hello to YouTube again and? Let's do it. And get to work? Okay. <laughs> All word order comes with a price. <laughs> this summer. You know, they don't do those those movie announcements. That used to be a fun thing, you know. When I was a teenager, there, was, there were comedians who would, you know, their whole shtick was to say, to make the, the movie guy voice and do trivial things with the movie guy voice, you know. This summer, on sale, eggs. You know, this sort of <laughs> mundane stuff, but with that voice and with that intonation and everything. And, and it doesn't happen anymore. There's nothing else. There's all, it's just... Brr, brr. That's all the movie... Oh, it's the um, Inception noise. That's yeah. it. That's what, all they do. So I'm, I'm, you know, this is just sort of millennial boomer kind of <laughs> stuff. But Complaints. Yeah. yeah. No, you should bring it back. Well, we have a channel, so... Yeah, we, we should could... bring it back. Oh, trailers. Old English That's Summer. Cool. Hashtag Old English Summer. Hashtag yes. Old English Summer. <gasps> I should do a trailer for Old English Summer. You do. I will I will edit it if you're nice to me. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. Seed.
planted. <laughs> um, and I've mentioned Old English Summer. I have to do the show thing. Sorry. Um, but yeah, there is an Old English course coming up this summer. Hashtag Old English Summer. You can take it. Um, follow me on Twitter. You'll see the the links and all that to get involved. It's eight weeks. We're, we're reading Old English texts. We're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, so if you're interested in that, I encourage you to join us this summer. That whole thing. <laughs> That, you know, we're, we're going to try and we're going to try and work stuff like that into it as well. It's going to be potentially slightly goofy, but uh, but based on sound pedagogical considerations. Uh, OK, shall we say hello to YouTube again? Good idea. OK. YouTube, welcome heartily back to another episode of Conline Clinic Feet Lucy Dove. You know, like like in albums, you know, feet. <laughs> eh, F-E-A-T, not like... Anyway, the point is, Lucy's here. Cool. Say hi, Lucy. Hi. How's hi it going? YouTube. Hi, YouTube. And chat. And everyone else. <laughs> All right. So we're we're feeling pretty goofy today. We're, we're working on uh, Lucy's cat, Conlang, called... Called... Bimunya. 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 There we go. Okay, so let's jump back in. We were just trying to figure out a way to solve this problem where we want free word order, but we don't want case marking. And the solution that has crept up on us, thanks to the chat as well, uh, is to use something called direct inverse alignment. And I've brought up the YouTube, uh, sorry, I brought up the Wikipedia article here. So you can see direct inverse alignment. It's a thing. Um, real. It's real. It's, it's very real. And um, what happens is, as we've explained already, or we've talked about last episode, rather, um, we have, when we have a transitive predicate, uh, we mark explicitly when uh, the subject is less animate than the object, the direct object. Uh, that's in a nutshell. And so that's what we can get away with. That's what we can do here to get away with having free word order and no case marking. So here we have, uh, we have to define what our NMC hierarchy doth be. So let's, let's write that down. So we have um, NMC hierarchy. And I saw some suggestions for this in the chat. Um, so Typically, you know, we'll see things like humans, animals, or non-human animals, inanimate objects. Um, there's also uh, pronominal subjects. So if there's a, you know, first person will be considered more animate than, a, say, a second person. Um, yeah, Sotin's uh, jumped in with, with that same point. <laughs> first person, second person, cat, everyone else, maybe. So Lucy, <laughs> this is a fun opportunity to do some a bit of world building if you want um what what are your thoughts yeah i mean i, I enjoy yes certain suggestion i think makes sense um first non person cat and galactic sand cat versus non-cat uh just cat cat first everything else afterwards or they could be so um, stuck up that they consider everything else non-living. <laughs> See what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the only animate objects are cats and everything else. They have a certain distaste for. <laughs> and then the only time in which we would be faced with ambiguity would be... Um, if there are two on the same level, so one cat doing something to another. Yeah. Or, you know, a rock smashing a window or something like that. Sounds good. Okay, so that, that works. So then let's come up with what the actual marker is. Okay. Um, so did I have anything? Do I have anything? I don't think you actually do have anything for this. Ooh. Um, 
do I not? What do I have? What do I have? Are you looking around in the spreadsheet? Yeah, I need. I also I should actually look in the. I heard there are some there. The chat. Okay, I'll I'll be the chat. Uh, I'll be the chat, the chat observer right now. Uh, Quain has said new. New. New is cute. Um, there's also a, a suggestion from Echoed Words of Meow. I like Meow. Uh, yeah, the only the only things the only other things I've used. Um, if I'm just looking at my spreadsheet, like the bits I don't think you've shown. Um, so Knee was negation, and um, hearsay was she at the end. Oh, we have an evidential. Interesting. Yeah. Must is who. Uh, she goes on the end of who. So there was Nimakonya Hushi. Apparently, you have to see it. Oh, okay. Can we put that up? Sure. Uh, can you where find it? Uh, where is it? Where is it? What tab are you on? It's on sheet two. Sheet two. Can you give me yep. the coordinates? <gasps> we do have an inverse. Look, look. Okay. Yeah. There we go. So it looks like we did have a conversation like this a year and a half ago, but I'm glad we're having it now because our friends on, in the chat have to, uh, uh, have to, uh, Freudian slip, get to experience it. Um, <laughs> all right. So let's put this in here. But I think our, the inverse system that we're coming up with in this uh, iteration is going to be better than the first one. Yes. Um, because it's going to take into account the animacy hierarchy, which I think I probably avoided introducing to you at that point because I didn't want to send you running into the night. Um, Completely sizzle my brain. Yep. <laughs> okay. So what is going on here? What are we? What can we learn from this? Uh, this. Um... So we have this. Yeah. So I think the original version just used um, just marked when the second noun was the subject. Uh, but I think we can do better than that. We can uh, we can use our animacy hierarchy, and that's typologically more interesting and cool. Okay, so ni mako nya hoshi. Second person sing. Sep sorry, second person subject. C, present tense. Third person object, which is a null. Um, a mood um, suffix meaning must and then the evidential she at the end apparently you have to see it <laughs> okay so given so let's say uh, used when subject is lower in animacy hierarchy Okay, so we have yep. Rio. Rio. Do you like that? Do you want to? I do. Uh, hang on. Let's let's should we apply it to something? Let's see yeah. How it sounds. Um. So let's apply it to this sentence. So what happens if um? Actually, in this case, we have the subject and the object quite clearly delineated, so we don't have to worry about it there. Um. Let's apply it to these sentences. I think this will be clearer. So we have Pion Renyan Yo U Shipunyo versus. So we have the same word order for both of these. But we want to make one of them inverse marked and one direct marked. So direct is the opposite of inverse. Um, Direct happens when the subject is higher on the animacy hierarchy than the object. So given that, what is the, which is direct and which is inverse? So, given that our animacy hierarchy is first persons, second persons, cats, then other. I guess the, the, uh, what did we put? Dio, dio, dio was before the person. 
Yes. R- but in which sentence? So is this direct or inverse? One horse carried a cat person. Does this need the direct marking or the inverse marking? Uh, that the first one needs the inverse. Right. Yes. Good. I yes. Got it. So Great. this is direct <laughs> because this is um, something on the. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Wait. 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 No. Which one were we talking about? We're talking about the first or the second one. You just, you just, you just say the right answer. Okay. Why probably... did I just say? Okay. So here's what's going on. <laughs> when you have something higher on the animacy hierarchy uh, acting as a subject on something that is lower in the animacy hierarchy, that is direct. Yes. And when you have something that is lower on the animacy hierarchy acting as a subject, and the object is lower, then you have inverse. Yes. So we need to mark. We don't actually have a marking for direct. It's just on its own. Uh, of course, you can have something for a marking for it, but you can also leave it unmarked. If one of these two is going to be unmarked, it's going to be this one. Mm-hmm. Um, but here's where we would put the inverse. So where do we want to put that? I think we have it as a subject already, or you have it as a subject already. I can't take credit for that. <laughs> yeah, uh, before the pus. Oh, no, hang on. I guess I will, you put it on the horse then, I will right? never use control F. Never. <laughs> right. So I think we would probably want to put it... I was thinking on the verb. Ah, was that... I think... Um, I think that was what it was. I wanted absolutely everything on the verb possible. I remember that. I, I remember yeah, one yeah. thing from the distant past. You wanted things it was on the just verb. Verb, expl- verb explosion. So then um, now, oh, that sounds familiar too. Yeah, verb explosion. I probably said that. Yeah, I probably said that a year and a half ago as well because I'm original. Okay, that's <laughs> going to be on the thumbnail. Verb explosion. Okay, great. Okay, so one horse carried a cat person. A cat person carried one horse. So now we have, now we have it. This is the crucial pair of sentences that shows the glory of the uh, direct inverse system in Bimunya. I will say, Valpine Fury, I enjoyed, I can't do the R's, it's just, it's not good with both, I can't pronounce it, but Riao, with the, with the trilly R instead of Rio, maybe sounds more cat-like. The uh, problem is we don't have a way with our syllable structure to get ow. I just realized. Oh, uh, did we not? Okay. What have we got? We have uh, N, Q, where Q is that. Unless there's a guttle stop in it, which... Uh, it could be mia u. It was a ria u. <laughs> right, right. Ria u. There we go. I... I, I mm. Or, yeah, we can, interesting. or we can broaden the syllable structure so that you can also have y- wa here. Oh, okay. Interesting. Because we have wa mm-hmm. right here. It's right there. You can use it. Oh, I see. It. So stick it with the, with the nasal mm-hmm. as an option. That yeah. could be good. Yeah, but yeah. the only thing is that I'd also kind of maybe want to have this there too. <laughs> we, but then it could get out of control. I mean, cat language. <laughs> so you could have something like meow, 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 meow. I don't know. I kind of enjoy it. Okay. Well, <laughs> what let's... does that think? What do you think about chat? Are we going to uh, let the point... palatalized wa into the coda? Meow. Queen is Queen is requesting uh, diphthongs. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Allow diphthongs, please, please. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, what diphthongs do we want, Lucy? If we're gonna just allow diphthongs as first-class members of the nucleus, what do we, we need want? Ow. Ow. We need ow. Yeah, for sure. All right. So, just leave, get rid of that. We'll add. If the cats are fine with it, I see no problem. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> if it's okay with the cats. Ow. Anything else? Um, you. 
I think. You? Have that? Like, new. Right. With the mu. You. Anything ending in e? Hmm. <clears throat> Is that, that cat like though? You know what, Sutton? I love the passion. No. <laughs> uh, legal diphthongs. Well, what you can't have your legal diphthongs, Lucy. Oh, I see. What happens if you use an illegal diphthong? The cops will be on you. Instantly. Okay. Instantly. Okay, I'll bear that in mind. Uh, I will warn the cats. Ow, you. And. Ew. 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 And. Uh, are there any others? I feel like is this is somewhere where we'd want to sacrifice naturalism for the for the vibe. So normally mm -hmm. you get things the more common cases is going like I, ow, things like that. Um these are the typical diphthongs you would get. Of course things like a and o uh, happen as well. Um sometimes ew and oi. Yeah, I think I think keep it as cat like as possible with the diphthongs, I would say. Um, okay, so then So that I think what we could do then is say is to get Sutton to make sure that Sutton is happy about this because it he is not possible. <laughs> well, it's very it's not possible that we could get something like own own and and I think this is what Sotna is trying to uh, to fight against. What do you think, Lucy? This is your language. So, um, what's his specific? Uh, what is he specifically stressed about? Could you please explain? So, when you have a um, a diphthong, you have a brand. So, okay, let's talk about syllable structure briefly. Um, this will be review probably to some people, but um, you have. So say you have, um, I don't know, moun as your syllable. Noun. So the onset here, so this is C, actually let's, let's make this clearly a diphthong. C, V, V, C. So the first consonant is the onset. So we have the first division is between m and aun. Onset and coda. Sorry, yes. Onset and rhyme. Then we also branch the rhyme into onset plus nucleus plus coda. That's just supposed to be pluses. I don't know what's going on. There we go. Onset, nucleus, coda. And then if you have a diphthong, you actually have a branching nucleus so imagine there are little lines connecting each so you have moun this branches into m and aun then you have aun that's branching to ow and n and then um, finally you have ow which is branching to a and u so that's a branching nucleus um <laughs> So often you'll get languages that do not like to have both a branching nucleus and a branching rhyme. Okay. I do like the moun. Obviously English is not one of these languages. No. Because <laughs> no, we can it, say it mound, mounds. But um, yeah, so that's, that's the, the thought process there. Okay. Um, I quite enjoy it though. Um, hmm. Yeah, I, th I think it adds a, a catness. So if you have something like moon or moon. Yeah, uh, new. new. But, but cru crucially, Lucy, with the ny at the end. Moon or just uh, new. Yeah. That's, that's uh, what's at issue here. 
So the nyeh is very hard to say, but I do enjoy. Or swap it up for M. Maum. Did we put M as yes. an option? Yes. We did, didn't we? Yes. Maun. Maun is very cat like, as Queen points out. Maun. Yes. Mewn. But the nyeh. Well, I think we, we kept it because it, it just it sounded a bit odd. And I am going for, I guess, space cats. <laughs> That's All brutal. right, Sutton, I'm sorry. The ruling's in. I'm um, sorry, Sutton. I, I like the weird, the weird bits. Okay, so then are we going to then choose, change Ryo to Ryao? I think so. It's it's very it's nice and gutturally cat like. Okay, so then let's I'm sorry, Sutton. Alright. So we have now about ten minutes left of our first conline clinic. Lucy, I wanna make sure that you have you have, you know, that your that your symptoms are taken care of, that you have a prescription. So what is what else is ailing you with this con line? I think if I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but you came no. with this this con line saying this is something I worked on a year and a half ago. It's a bit of a, you know, everything's all over the place. I want to just get it all together and, and find a way to get back into it. Sure. Is that more or less? Yes. Or, or did I did I utterly invent that? No, no, I think that's very accurate. Uh because obviously Looking at this from uh, not having looked at this for some time, I sort of didn't quite understand what uh, I even wrote, <laughs> with your help, obviously. Um, so this is very fun. Uh, and now it sounds a bit more cat-like, which I enjoy. So I'm just going to do a little bit more documentation so that you have something to go away with. And then maybe you could do, you know, like any like anyone at a clinic i'm gonna tell you to go home and take take your prescription and maybe who knows maybe someday you could come back and and update us on on how the how bimunya has been going um so when animacy hierarchy is violated so what i would recommend if you're trying to get back into this conlang is to a Start up a, a grammar document where you're where you're going through things and documenting everything that you all the decisions you've made. So I think we are now at the point where this grammar where this language is it's got its flavor, it's got a lot of stuff sorted out. Got flavor. It's it's got flavor in droves. <laughs> and you want to then stop it from changing so much. Like you've got the the outline already. Mm -hmm. So I think it's time to document, which I think I probably won't do with you on screen because I don't know if documentation is like the most engaging thing for a stream, you know, chat, correct me if I'm wrong, but, um, you know, there's, there's only so much of, and the first person pronoun, you know, like, come on, but, um, to start on the documentation and to have a concrete text that you're that you're writing or translating to situate all of these, you know, there is a reason for you to come up with more vocabulary. It's a reason for you to come up with more grammar. Okay, echoed words has corrected me. There is something there is something to the uh, the watching the documentation. Oh, good, good, good. Um, oh, good. Okay. Um, oh, we could we could show the very poorly done attempts at some sort of um, writing system. Let's do that to, to play us out. Let's, let's take a look at the writing system. So I'm going to move this over here so we can see everything. Uh, but, but before we do that, Lucy, does that sound good? What, what sort of text would you be interested in translating? I know on the discord, we have a ton of um, example sentences to translate and a lot of like um, translation challenges. Maybe you could try one of those. I could do. I would like uh, perhaps a poem about cats. Um, maybe, maybe I should find something. 
I mean, T.S. Yeah. Eliot could definitely uh, help you yeah, out Yeah, no, that's, that's true. I'll investigate and I'll uh, post something in Discord, perhaps. Okay. Well, and did we did we plug Discord in this episode for YouTube? Because we're talking about Discord. Anyway, if you're not on the Discord, link's in the description. Enough said. <laughs> um, all right. So let's take a look at the writing system. All right, Lucy. Very scribbly. Talk to us about you... this writing system. Okay, so... Uh... Yeah, this was actually another of your courses, wasn't it? Um, it was, that was fun. I, I really enjoy writing systems, alphabets, you know. Um, I like learning to read them, and then I never end up learning the language itself. But, you know, it's fine. <laughs> um, so I was basing this on scratch marks um, because, you know, I guess... Uh, historically prehistorically uh the cats would just sort of scratch the ground or scratch bits of rock with their claws so that's this on the left you have scratches yes. and little paw prints yes scratches and paw prints um but i guess as they evolved to have writing systems and technology i was imagining cats using tablets with their claws i don't know why um and I was so sort of. We see like the evolution right. going from left to right here. Yeah, I mean, so, I um, I really I I like the Devanagari writing system, um, so that's what that is on the bottom right. Um, but I was sort of playing with a vertical one, and then more the one line was the was on the left and then without a line um just sort of experimenting with things this is really cool so i think i guess i should explain why there's this uh, rp up here it, during that course um we started out creating an alternative writing system for english and then we worked our way into um into other languages uh so that's what this is doing here this is a worksheet from that class um, I really like this. I like this. Uh, it's almost like um, like a, a a musical staff, isn't it? But yeah, it's top a, to a bottom. vertical a vertical musical staff. Yeah, that's really cool. And so the position on the staff is is important, right? Because we have um, I don't I don't know if this is the grapheme to phoneme correspondences that you ended up going with because this is obviously for English, but. Um, you have N here being marked with this this diagonal slash um, top right to bottom left uh, on this on this side, and then we have uh, I believe it's marking O here, or or is this or are these both N? I'm not sure. North, yeah. So okay, so these are both north. N. Mm -hmm. Okay, but but there are cases where there's something on one side. Versus something on it. I can't really draw on this, unfortunately. I don't have my um, my tablet. But say, is there any case where you have a scratch on one side and it means something, and that same scratch on the other side and it means something dif uh, different? I, I mm, interesting. Uh, possibly. Yeah, it's it's about the length of the scratches going across. So if you look at the th in north and the uh, I can't, I, uh, IPA help, <laughs> uh, wind. Ah, uh, okay. So I see in you the. You want it longer. Yeah. Oh, it's the. There we go. Versus Thank you. th. We actually have yeah. a very similar, a very similar grapheme, but we have uh, it lengthened it for the voiced consonant. That's cool. Yeah. Um. So it would be really cool to see how this, you know, if you could show us how your, how Bimunya is written. Um, I see we have a little bit up here, um, but it would be really cool to see how these shapes kind of correspond. And, and what I would say is please do keep working on this and post your results in the Discord. And when you reach another wall, we can come back and, and, and talk about it on stream sometime. I will give it a go. Uh... I will try. I was. I, I remember struggling 
with getting it to look good with the mini lines because it was taking up so much room. Um, you know, and that's why I condensed it uh, on the bottom right. I think it looks really cool. And I, I really love the sort of origin story and how you can see it's how it started out by cats scratching and putting their paws. And then, so the, the paw prints are the vowels, right? The paw prints are the vowels, yeah. Ah, uh, that's cool. So that actually does really matter where on the staff you put it. Yes, yes, it does. Uh, it is like a musical, uh, uh, what do you call it? Well, mega cool. Mega cool. I think though, I think we're we're coming close to our end. So why don't we bid uh, a good a good day, a good night, a good evening, whatever, to YouTube. YouTube, thanks for joining us. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed this this uh, issue of the Conline Clinic. Come back um, and you know write some notes of encouragement to Lucy to keep uh, to keep going with this language uh, in the comments. Um, Yes, Lucy, anything to say to our, our, our friends with YouTube? Um, thank you for your help. Um, I had fun. I had fun revisiting this. It has been a while, and I feel like there's a great appreciation for cats from the chat. Uh, That's well there should be. Exactly. All right, um, YouTube. Someone, if anyone's written a dog language, uh, we should we should fight. <laughs> Okay, that, that was not what I was expecting that sentence to end like. I was going to say, you know, if you've written a dog language, good for you. Keep going, you know. But no, fighting is the way that we're, we're going to go with that. All right. So, YouTube, thanks again. We will see you next time. And chat. Yay. That was fun. Lucy. Hi. Lucy, thank you. Thank you for joining us. I did us. it. I came on stream. Yes. Um, terrifying. Hopefully I didn't make a fool of myself. Um, I'll see you all in Discord. Indeed, indeed. Um, and chat, yeah, let us know uh, what you think of the format. If you, if the the second, you know, if, if we've integrated the the two the two speakers well, or what we can do better, or you know, just just let us know. Um, this is uh, this is a new thing, so we're kind of experimenting and trying to see uh, see what works. Um, I always like to keep uh, keep you on your toes there. But oh, th thank you, chat. There's very nice things being said in chat. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone. So um, I guess, are there any announcements? I already, I already applied the old English thing, so I don't need to do that now. Um, we will see you again on Tuesday where we will be, I don't know. I don't know. We'll be doing something fun. I don't remember what it is. But we need we, to work yeah. that out. Possibly. Yeah, I don't know. No. We got to work that out, but it'll be fun. So come join us Tuesday, um, 2 p.m. Eastern, and we will see you either there or in Discord or in the YouTube comment section, as the case may be. So until then, oh, I miss, I, I was given all these great sign-offs last time. Lucy, you were on vacation, you didn't see, but um, it was stuff like, this is Colin Gori, schwa ning off. But then that sounds a bit... It sounds a bit weird when I say schwanning off. It just sounds a bit rude, actually. Swanning. It sounds swanning. And it is, swanning. That, maybe that's something like, that's something off. I don't know. So anyway, regardless, we'll see you next time. And may you, may you live, may you love, you have my blessing. There you go.